Hey guys, we've just had the most incredible follow-up conversation with Nikki Munitz. We chat about her book, Fraud, which is flying off the shelves. It's on the number one bestseller list. We chat about her career that she's building. And above all, the most important thing that she's built her career on and the most important thing in our lives, self-esteem. Nikki is a self-esteem expert and coach. And this one is incredibly valuable because without self-esteem, we can't really reach our potential. Nikki says we probably only get to 25% of what we're capable of doing within our lives, personal and business-wise. Self-esteem is the f pillar, the foundation of a quality life. So enjoy this. Welcome to Coffee and Conversations with Champions, the Leadership Edition. Hello, Nikki, welcome back. Thank you. Thank now, you. Thank you. Know, you. Now even like world famous, so which is very cool. <laughs> so, Nix, how's it been since the book launch and tours and you know multiple interviews and podcasts? At least I like to say we were the first, so that makes me very happy. <laughs> uh, thank you. I mean, you're the first because you've always been part of like this journey with me and so supportive. Um, Thank yeah, you. Uh, people like you believed in me when I still struggled to believe in myself. <laughs> so it's hugely appreciated. Um, what's it been like? Mad. It's been mm. absolutely mad. <laughs> um, I thought we wrote a book and it got published and it got put in the shops. I had no idea how many interviews and um, kind of the, the impact uh, yeah. so quickly that would actually happen. Yeah, it's been quite amazing. So be, being at the, the first launch that was in Rosebank and just seeing like, I don't know, there was maybe eight, 900,000 people there. <laughs> it, was, it was packed. And yeah. I think what made it so special and like, this is maybe why, cause I mean, the book's on the bestseller list, right? Yeah. Currently. So congratulations on having a bestselling book for your first book, but what hit me so much being there um, was the fact that every single person in that room, you had had a positive effect on their lives. Yeah, I, I think um, that was definitely a huge um, reason for wanting to do the book mm. is that understanding of knowing um, each one of us has an impact on someone else's life every single day, all day long, whether we realize it or whether we don't. Yeah. And when, whether we and, want it or not. Yeah. How, how is, you know, that's also a big thing, right? Because, um, I know for myself in active, we, we, I, I, listen, you know, active addiction is such a lovely term. I prefer to say when I was a drunk and, um, you know, choosing to live my life in the bottle, the, the consequences of my drinking I put way to the back of my mind because I didn't want that guilt and that shame and that understanding of the damage that was being caused. I think, mm -hmm. ha have people spoken to you sort of about how the book has changed them, changed their perspective and their thinking? Can we chat a bit about that? I've had a lot of people reach out, you know, realizing how self-esteem um, work will be able to mm. change their lives. And so I've started on the journey with quite a few people. Um, and that for me is the most exciting thing in the world because I get to watch someone's light come on where they realize um, how much power they actually have over their own lives and that they get to make themselves happy um, and that they're allowed to make different choices uh, that might be completely opposite to the choices that they've made up until that point. Um, and just watching that journey unfold is magical. Is um, I don't think everyone in their lives will think it's all that magical because uh, some of the time, you know, the decisions that they make is sometimes to change careers or to end jobs uh, or to end relationships or things like that. Um, you know, it's not often, it's not always obviously that intense, but those things do happen as well. You know, often we've been stuck in our prisons thinking we have to be there um, yeah. when in actual you don't you don't yeah. the how i mean it's a silly question because i think it's the single most important thing that we have in our lives 
You can just talk mm-hmm. us through self-esteem. And the, I was going to say how important is self-esteem, but I kind of answered that for myself. Because if you don't have oh. that, you, like your self-esteem is directly proportionate to you fulfilling your potential and the potential of your life, right? You know, talk, talk us through a little bit about that. Sure. So self-esteem is my ability to esteem myself. And that is based on my knowledge on my own value and worth in the context of the world. And for most of us, we spend our lives trying to prove our value and worth to the world. Um, And, you know, without living with that knowledge, we land up doing things to try and keep other happy, others happy or to get approval Um, when in actual fact, we're kind of doing the opposite for ourselves. And so, whereas I might have this really successful life outwardly, because I'm so busy trying to prove myself, inwardly, I might not be feeling that at all. Mm -hmm. So if I can find that magical place where I'm doing what I love and doing it successfully, then that's where my freedom is. And that's what I get from from working on my self-esteem. I mean, you know, it's what you do all day. 100%. 100%. <laughs> no, exactly. Because, I mean, you know, coming from where I came from, where I learned at a very young age that I had to sacrifice myself to people that didn't have my best interests at heart in order to try and get love. You know, that like that craziness of going willingly to my mother's abusers because, oh, sorry, to my, going willingly to the abusers my mother sent me to because I thought if I did a good enough job, I could get it to love me. You know, that that is, and, and that's what I built my life on because at the age of six, that's what I made a decision on. That was my worth and my value. And having to unpack that is a constant journey. But I think it's a journey, right, towards loving ourselves, as difficult as that is, and seeing our self-worth, rather than where we're living is a journey towards hating ourselves and despising ourselves. Absolutely. I mean, I was speaking to a client this week where, you know, all she's ever wanted is to be loved as like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. At no point do we even consider that we have the power to do that for ourselves. Yeah, sure. Yeah. What a change. I mean, that that is uh, for me and it's like it it hit me hard now when you said it's like that's the most heartbreaking thing for me because Mm -hmm. to see people in active addiction or in pain or in so like you the love you're looking for is you the only one who can give you that love and i think forget even the love from others from parents from spouses from children the love that we fundamentally like the the purest most important love is the love from ourselves you know and it's like it just to see people walking around with the potential to love themselves but not is very difficult so I think you know at the risk of of going into any sort of religious topic which I I don't really want to but any mainstream religion and even non-mainstream talks about the fact that we're made in God's image Mm. and you know that we're meant to love our neighbors like we love us I mean we talk about this stuff all day long Long, yeah you know we with these topics and these themes yet we know nothing about it or or even how to remotely get just a, a tiny piece of it yeah. Um, and the clues have been there the whole time. The, absolutely, I think yeah. If if we look at it from a because like, I know you 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 moving on you're moving into the speaking circuit onto the speaking circuit to talk mm-hmm. about that and the value for corporations for companies for management teams to understand that developing that within their staff within them t- their teams within themselves can make such a profound probably. Nothing else will make as big a difference, right? You can go on any course you want, any management course, but if you're not understanding who you are and your value and your worth and your capability and then believing in your capabilities. So we chat a little bit about that. Uh, it's it's interesting because I belong to this coaching organization and they were looking for corporate coaches for a, a group of middle management that were moving up into upper management and, and to help them to do that. And when I offered them my service, they were quite 
you know, intrigued, but also undecided, you know, mm. does it make sense that this would be part of corporate coaching? Is this really going to help? But the reality is if you've got a group of people that don't know how to communicate, that don't know whether they deserve to be in the positions that they're in, that aren't able to manage their own emotions, that, mm. you know, it's a multitude of areas that actually get impacted through our self-esteem that will make us less effective in our lives in whichever form. So in our careers, it will be exactly the same. So if you are in corporate and you're wanting to get the most out of your employees, I mean, the reality is if they're okay with themselves, they're in a much better position to handle whatever tasks come their way, to ask for help when they need it, mm -hmm. and to be more effective as human beings in their lives. You know, um, for me, it's an absolute no-brainer. And I think, as you said, when you have people, you know, that's, we are all people, and this is how people function. This is how people work, right? You know, this is it. Mm -hmm. um, I think not only more more functional at work, but if you have your <clears throat> if you're able to develop your self esteem, your self worth, your self love, right? You're better at home. Mm -hmm. You're 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 a better well, partner. You're better, and then you bring that into the office with you because you haven't had fights. You haven't or less fights. Less because what? How does self esteem work in terms of communication with others? Let's say with bosses and with partners. Sure. So self-esteem is the foundation that we build our lives on. And self-esteem, if it's if it's not uh, kind of effective for us, we live in the world without the knowledge that we deserve to live as equals. Right. And in order for communication to be taking place between two parties, I often get taught one of three ways, which is to be other aggressive or to be passive or to be passive aggressive. And in each of those communication methods, it requires one party to hold all the power and the other party to have none. And when I live with self-esteem, I learn about assertive communication, mm -hmm. which is about the fact that we have equal power. I'm 100% powerful in my life and you're 100% powerful in yours. And even if we don't agree on something, I don't need to spend my energy trying to force you to agree with my view or vice versa. I can be okay with the fact that we're not on the same page and I can communicate that clearly and respectfully and to be able to leave that there. Um, and so for me, to, in order to have a powerful engagement with someone, I need to know that I have a right to a voice and an opinion and so do you. 100%. I mean, we only look in the world right now yeah. to understand how important that would actually be. Absolutely. And I think... If we look at what's going on right now, I think that there's so many elements that are contributing to the chaos that we're we're seeing. Be, you know, it's post COVID, and I think there's a lot of anxiety about that. People being locked away, people not being heard, and having spoken to people that are around me, they, they there is so much anger because they feel power powerless. You know, and we and and people focus on what they can't control. And they they just get more and more and more angry and frustrated until things explode. So, within self esteem, you know, how, how can that avoid this, stop this happening? And then I do want to go back to the communication thing that you you said. So, sure. well, communication really is the key <clears throat> to making whatever changes that I need to in my life. Yeah. And the reality is that you know there are two elements to our lives always. There's the parts that are out of our control. You know, today the weather's not looking that marvelous. I would love to be able to wave my magic wand and have the sun shining, but I can't do that. Okay. And then there's the parts of my life that are in my control. And how do I think like action change in those areas? Well, I need to be able to give myself permission. First of all, mm -hmm. I need to know that I have the skill set and acknowledge my strengths that will enable me to feel competent to make those changes. And then number three, through my assertive communication, I activate those changes. Um, and, and, you know, life is hard. Financially, people are struggling. Emotionally, people are struggling. Mm -hmm. If I don't feel like I can even ask for help or that, you know, I have the ability to change, I kind of stay paralyzed and stuck in whatever situation that I'm in. And sure, I can't go from poverty to millionaire overnight, mm. but I might be able to learn how to make some changes in my life that could create some meaningful difference and change, definitely.
you know, the thing is going from um, poverty to millionaire, what can be changed very quickly is maybe not the circumstances, but the with self-esteem, I think comes gratitude, you know, mm. and comes appreciation for what you've got, what you've built, what you've survived. You know, it's amazing that like, uh, I, we, I lost everything, but I ended up here and I was able to do this to protect myself and, and others. I think to, to, to go back to the communication point where you said it's 100%, 100%, I think it's so valuable because just because I'm able to have 100% doesn't mean I've taken anything away from you in the communication. You know, not it's not that there's 100% available and the more I get, the less you have. You know, I think that so often we spend energy trying to force people to agree with us in some way mm. or, or giving up our power completely and agreeing with something we don't actually agree with right. because we feel that that needs to be the interaction. The reality is we're all completely different. My frame of reference, my upbringing, my understanding, my belief system, my value system is different to yours. Okay. Absolutely. And so I might um, see the world in a certain light and you might see it differently. And if I just respect you and understand that you're different to me, mm. and to be okay with that, it, you know, I, I think maybe the issue is that people don't understand that important ingredients in, in this um, exchange of 100% power is respect. Mm. Yeah. I can agree with you without being disrespectful to you. And I think that that's often where things get confusing. You know, people think that because we're not on the same page that there automatically has to be a fight. Well, there mm. doesn't. <laughs> right, yeah. I think, is that something that's maybe more prevalent now in the younger generations? Or is that something that you think have, you've seen with clients of all age groups? Actually, I think it's the other way around. I think younger generations are far more um, inclusive as opposed to exclusive, like anything goes, you right. know. Yeah. You, yeah. So we don't have to agree. I just have to respect whatever your mm. belief is for the most okay. part. Right. Um, obviously, there's levels of immaturity that will make us have arguments and things. But mm. uh, for, for us as part of the older generation and the, and the generations, you know, older than us, there is more of like a very clear right and wrong, but who gets yes. to decide who's right who's and right who and gets who to wrong. decide who's wrong. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that's, and that's something very valuable for parents as well. Which are, how important is it for parents? I mean, it's a silly question, right? To do self-esteem work, you know? Well, <laughs> um, yeah. as a mother of two teenagers, um, I would say it is... And, and um, a Clive. <laughs> Listen, my Clive is, he's often my parent. So, so yeah, yeah he's 100%. certainly the, the wise one. Um, but, you know, teenagers, as they're transitioning into adulthood, need to learn about their power. And mm. like any young bull, <laughs> they're going to fight for power in, in, you know, their family environment. Mm. And often what parents end up doing is either they give them free reign or they fight and pull against that power that struggle completely. When in actual fact, what we need to be doing is empowering and teaching them that they have this ability to be powerful in their own lives, but within reason. Mm -hmm. okay. And so as a parent, learning about self-esteem is knowing that you're not fighting against me. It's natural and normal for you to be like, you know, this, this power struggle and this engagement and how do I manage it? Um, and to not have to take that personally, um, which is often difficult because it feels really painful and quite scary when this like little human that we've spent our lives nurturing and, and like, mm. you know, really building up now says, I'm not interested in what you've got to say and I don't agree with you and I want to do it my way. And mm. all of a sudden you're like, you know, <laughs> what have I done to deserve this? When in actual fact, it's not personal at all. Right. And and if you're sitting with a, a strong level of self-esteem and your self-belief, you understand it's not personal and, and you can impart those lessons to to your kids. 
Totally. And to teach them what to do with that power. Because mm. if you don't know what to do sure. with this newfound power in your life, you can make some really poor decisions along the way that can seriously negatively impact your life. Ask me, I'll tell you about those decisions. Yeah. Um, I made many of them. <laughs> um, and <laughs> in fact, I think I made all of them. <laughs> yeah. Going and running through the list in my head. <laughs> Um, and yeah. so, you know, the combination of learning how to make decisions effectively with mm. a healthy self-esteem together with knowing how powerful I am in my own life and my ability to take these growth producing risks, you know, mm. I create this like perfect storm of growth and change. Um, and as parents, we are guardians mm. of these youngsters and, and need to be teaching them how to do this. And it's impossible to teach people something we don't know how to do ourselves. Yeah, ab absolutely. And I think, and kids can see that, right? Where they can say, oh, you read that in the book versus, you know, you know, you, you've experienced this uh, yourself personally. I just want to chat about the corporate stuff and then to go sort of into you and so with your businesses and how, how self-esteem has worked for you. We're speaking to corporates, because I know yes. we, we've done a lot of wellness work and with them, and I've, we've seen such a difference uh, in the staff and in the value, and it's, it's a lot of fun now because we've got a lot of, of the staff that we've been nagging for decades, it feels like, to come to the gym and train. It's amazing what happens just before summer in the beach and up, you know, the training, the training goes up. But with, with the, that mental health, because self-esteem is mental health, right? Or at least it's, it's an under, I mean, it definitely mental health, but it's an understanding of our mental health state as well. And it's the ability to step back and say, hmm, you know, I'm not going to do this or this is not good for me. Or as you said, I need help. What are the benefits that companies can derive? from working with you? I think, you know, the best way that I could probably explain it is that, um, like you said, uh, you know, I, I don't become a robot when I get to the office mm. and I don't switch work off in my head when I get home. You know, I'm a human being. And if there's stuff going on in my personal life, it's going to affect my work performance. And if there's stuff going on in my work performance, it's going to affect my home life. And, then, and, and that becomes I, a loop with, within itself. Absolutely. Right? Mm. absolutely. And that's why people's mental health is so challenged, I suppose, um, at the moment, because there's no reprieve. Um, mm. and, I, I, and I really understand why people turn to substance. Mm -hmm. um, I absolutely do, because there is no way to kind of short circuit that uh, angst, you know, yeah. that heaviness. Um, often, even when we're sleeping, we get woken up and, we, you know, we never get to kind of just have that time out mm. unless we learn how to manage ourselves more effectively. And, you know, people expect, you know, employees to come to work and to just function. Um, and we know that you know, all these EAPs have been created, you know, these employee wellness programs mm. to try and help their employees function more effectively. I'm not sure of the effectiveness thereof or the, or the use thereof even. Mm. Um, and for me to, to bring in the self-esteem work could make the most magnificent difference in how valued your employee feels or how empowered or how supported um, and their ability to do it themselves, you know, mm -hmm. in, slight, in slight tweaks in their own behavior and their own thinking, like it could be an absolute game changer in their lives. And, you know, corporate is all about, you know, we want to improve outcomes for work performance wise. How do we do that if we don't take the whole human being into account? Yeah. Because I, I think it is, it's not something that is mainstream yet, but it's something that I'm looking forward to watching you making it mainstream over the, the coming years. So they, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> but it, it, it's the foundation. And, you know, you're speaking from personal experience. I'm speaking from personal experience. That's why this is so, I'm, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to chat to you about this. Because, and we've seen it with thousands and thousands of people coming through treatment and coming through recovery that <clears throat> you can you can say every anything that you want 
uh, do all the work, do all the step. But if you're not working on that self-esteem, if you're not building that foundation, you're going to be back in a couple of months or in a couple of years or in a couple, or unfortunately not at all because you didn't make it. And I think for for corporates where it's about staff, you know, becoming optimal, but it's also about the management team and the directors and the leadership where, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate that I get to coach, um, you know, online with a lot of guys that are quite high up in companies around the world. And, you know, we have conversations about older guys stuck in their groups, in their, in, in their positions where they're literally just trying to cling on to that to make, you know, to, to make it through to retirement. But I think that that's ultimately lack of self-esteem because if you have that self, you can realize the fact I'm 63 doesn't make a difference. I can be as dynamic as I want to be. So even for leadership, it's just as it, it's even more important. Humans are humans. It doesn't matter what your role in the organization is. You know, just because I show you an outward uh, look of success doesn't necessarily mean that I feel that way internally. I'm right. working with a few clients at the moment that are really high up in their respective careers and are saying to me, well, do I really need my big house in Santon? <laughs> you know? Like, I actually want my life to mean something. I want mm. to make a difference. And maybe that might be in a leadership position, mentoring and making a difference in someone whose career is just beginning. Right. You know? yeah. And about learning how to ask the right questions and empowering questions to make people believe in themselves um, and in their ability to function optimally. Like, for me, without self esteem, we are getting not even a quarter of what we could be out of our own lives and of those around us. Yeah. And and this isn't a dress rehearsal. You know, we're not here forever. We're not, this is not practice for coming back. It's about getting it done now. And that's so vital. It, so it, talk us a little bit about the work, what you're doing at Sandhurst, all of these, mm. uh, the projects that you, the 10,000 projects that you've got going on. You know, sometimes I really like, <laughs> I forget actually going on so uh at sandhurst we've got some really amazing projects that are happening right mm. now um, we're doing partnerships with um, a facility in thailand where we're doing a you know a, a program that for eating disorder clients based at their facility we're going to be running the eating disorder aspects of the program for them engaging with the the golden key program my program mm. of self-esteem um because we're seeing such incredible results um here Mm -hmm. So they've asked us to incorporate it into their program. In fact, we start with their first client today. So that's really awesome. exciting. Um, and the best part is it's a man, you know, and often mm -hmm. men don't talk about their struggles around their body image or their eating disorders. Yeah. So that's really exciting for us, groundbreaking. Um, and then we're doing some inner child training um, with Nathan Jones, who's based in the UK. Um, and his um, therapeutic interventions are also really groundbreaking. And we feel really privileged that, you know, our values align to such a degree that he's incorporated us um, into his offering and wants us to, to really be able to offer it here in, in South Africa, which we know financially keeps us quite limited in the types of trainings we can do um, because the RAND is unfortunately so weak. Um, against could you, other could you do some self-esteem work with the RAND? That would be incredibly valuable. Uh, I'd absolutely love to, but it would have to start in government, and I'm, yeah. I'm still ill-equipped. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still ill-equipped there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I get to do some incredible training with um, coaches uh, at an international coaching organization who have uh, agency in both um, the Middle East in the UK and mm -hmm. in the US, the head office is in New York. Um, and it's all high end coaches working with the movie stars. So I get mm -hmm. to kind of rub shoulders with celebs. It's super exciting and I have so to act cool. like I'm not totally starstruck. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they're making a meaningful difference in people's mm -hmm. lives. Um, and I get to train the coaches, um, which for me is the most exciting because sure. coaches mean that I have a bigger reach. When I work with one client, that's amazing. And that person mm -hmm. will obviously with other people in their lives but a coach is going to have direct impact on many um, clients and that really is a massive vision um, and a, a little secret which I'll give a tidbit on is that um, together with a, another 
a colleague of mine and, and also a mentor of mine, we are start, starting a um, coaching school. Um, awesome. So for those who actually want to learn and to get um, affiliated, they will be able to train with us. Um, and that should be up and running really soon. Um, and you'll have an internationally recognized coaching um, a qualification with an NQF level five. So you'll be able to practice internationally. Mm. Um, yeah, I, like for me, working one on one is a gift with a client, but I really want to empower others to do the same so that more people can get more self-esteem. Like I just, I want more. I've always wanted mm. more. Um, used to be drugs. Yeah. Now it's self-esteem. No, a hundred percent. And I think it's, that's such a valid point because like we have an urgency in our lives because it's like you look back and go, not to say that time was wasted, but it was, and it was meant to be spent that way. And that's our evolution, but it's like, we don't have a lot of time. So got to get as much done. And it's, it's about building an incredible legacy, which, which you're doing. Right? Just to chat about the, the eating disorder, if I may, like, whew. I mean, that, that's, if we look at that as the addictions, I mean, you're an alcoholic, don't drink. You're a drug addict, don't take drugs. You, you have an eating disorder. How do you deal with that? Because, you know, I, I think it, it's so much more on the self-esteem than, I don't want to say any of the other addictions, but it's huge. So It, it is massive. You know, with, with the substances, I can, obviously, I don't need alcohol or mm. drugs in order to live. Um, yeah. but food I do. Um, and so I need to learn how to take my dragon out for a walk five times a day, which is really, really challenging. Mm. And I think that, you know, the biggest struggle for us in this field is that people think that they don't qualify to get help around issues that they might have an, you know, an unhealthy relationship with their bodies or with food. Mm. I only need to walk into any mainstream gym and see the abuse of steroids to know like, Good Lord, this is problematic. Um, Not even you know. the abuse of steroids. It's youngsters, you know, people under the age of 20, under the age of 14, taking supplements and creatine and pre-workout and stuff that's really not necessary if you focus on eating correctly. Absolutely. And coming from a place of self-love instead of self-hatred. Mm. Yeah. Um, which often people walk into the gym, it's all about self-hatred. Mm. I'm not big enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not that, you know, um, and so, and I want everything to be on like double the speed, hence taking all these supplements yeah. instead of like, nurturing this body and seeing like letting it nurture you back, love you yeah. back and seeing what it can actually do. Um, you know, I, I was speaking to, to my trainer yesterday and she was just saying to me, um, the the crazy you know. the crazy psycho one, I mean, that that one, <laughs> the strong powerful survival the, one, yes, yeah, the strong one. powerful survival one who makes you do crazy psycho things at five in the morning. That's the that's the correct. one, yeah, yeah, the awesome one. Yeah. <laughs> and you're saying you know, like um, for someone my age, I'm very strong. And I said, yeah. listen, I am very strong for someone not my age. <laughs> yeah, and she exactly. said, yeah. But this is the consistent like training what it actually does you know and often people get frustrated with their bodies or or, or how they're able to um you know it's just the inconsistency and the abuse that we mm. give to our bodies and then we get kind of annoyed that our bodies don't respond optimally or effectively yeah. um and maybe i use the term eating disorder too loosely like it doesn't always um, get classified as an eating disorder, but certainly unhealthy body image mm. and um, a toxic relationship with food um, often, you know, qualifies you for help regardless. Yeah. So, yeah, that's but, that's where we are right now. And and we've seen you know people sort of using food either to punish themselves, for children to punish their parents, or to try and get love. You know, the the skinnier you are, the more you, the more praise you get. Uh, you you put on a bit of weight. <clears throat> you then sort of chastised, and you, we we use it as a way of punishing ourselves. So just, I think, what what when we have something that we love and we value, right? We protect mm -hmm. it. So I suppose that's self esteem. It's teaching us to love and value ourselves. Absolutely. Um, right. 
you know, we we taught to just make decisions from a really toxic place. Mm. Um, and, you know, clients often come to me for help around their eating disorders or their, you know, their body image stuff. And, and I start doing the self-esteem work and they're like, oh, but how are you going to help me to, mm. you know, stop doing what I'm doing? And I'm like, well, this is how I'm helping you. Yeah. You know, this is how you're going to help yourself because when you love yourself you make different decisions when you look in the mirror and you're saying mm. kind things about yourself even about the parts of your body you don't necessarily like mm. it changes your brain chemistry it changes your feelings it changes the way you operate in the world and one day they wake up and they're like <laughs> i made different decisions <laughs> i don't know what happened and i'm like yeah. just keep doing that yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely so next i think one one last thing and i know um you you've got to run but we're coming yeah. up to december um and i think a lot of people go out and cause a lot of chaos and destruction and uh you know putting themselves in danger what sort of advice or structure would you give to people sort of at this time of year and i think also particularly around the holidays people are alone it can be quite quite a traumatic time well, I'll give the same advice that I gave to one of my clients who's struggling around her eating. Um, you know, on the during the week, she's absolutely fine with her eating. On the weekend, she tends to go out and she'll go to a restaurant and she'll order whatever, you know, unhealthy, delicious item she can possibly find mm. on the menu. And I said, you know, I asked her, what do you think you could do differently? And she couldn't really think of a solution. And when we really unpacked it, the solution was perhaps she could look at the menu online before going to the restaurant and decide before she actually gets there what she's going to order mm. so that it's not like, ooh, waffles and cake. And, you know, like she could actually have chosen something before she gets there. Mm. And I would give the same suggestion around this time of year, you know, plan, <laughs> plan ahead. Be proactive. Um, yeah. If you know that this is a lonely time, what could you do? Could you let friends know? Could you, you know, just like have some like appropriate plan in place that's going to help you get through this? If you know you're going to have a big night, can you ask someone who's going to be there to say, listen, if you see I'm getting messy, just bring me a glass of water, <laughs> you know, like you know, help me to actually manage this time most effectively um, instead of just kind of throwing darts and hoping for the best because, yeah. you know, uh, failing to plan is like planning to fail. Yeah. And I think it's like if, if we looked after our kids as well as we looked after ourselves, you know, and we loved and valued them, it just, that's a great yeah. sort of yardstick that I, I use um sort of to to think about myself would i feed this to my kid you know so unfortunately i think a lot of parents do you only need to yeah. drive past any of the unhealthy drive throughs and see like, like oh we're spoiling our kids here you go here's yeah. some toxic poison yeah. for you yeah. Yeah, exactly no 100 percent. or you know you you take them and then well the kids finished eating i'll just finish what's on the plate because we don't we don't want to basically waste that so all right next yeah. how do people get hold of you uh, so you can get hold of me on my website, which is um, mm -hmm. nikkimunitz.com, or you can get hold of me through, you can pop me a mail at consulting at nikkimunitz.com, or uh, give me a shot uh, on WhatsApp, 083-600-8255. Um, yeah, uh, there's, this is a hard time, and I'd like to uh, just let people know that help is available. Okay. Perfect. And you are available for, uh, you know, for companies, for corporates, for individuals doing it in person, online. They fly you anywhere in the world, business class at a minimum, of course. And then they have to pay for your assistant to come with. And then yeah. my, my, my photography <laughs> team. <laughs> your photo absolutely. Well, you know, that's the crazy thing, right? With traveling nowadays, you take a media team with you and then you utilize that to produce content. It was a lot of fun. Um, it's, you know, next, it's been awesome to chat to you and I just to see the difference, the importance and value that you place on helping people move out of pain and just to see how great they can be. Like, I mean, sure. What a wonderful way that you're living your life. Well, while you help people move into pain, you know, yes. <laughs> volunteer and they pay me for that voluntarily. Um, <laughs> I had a father and son come and train with me who I've known for a long time. 
and they're like, ah, 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 like within within I don't know, minute, minute and a half, you know, and they're like, the the famous lines, is this the warm up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and then so, uh, w w when's the next book coming out? <laughs> oh gosh, I'm still recovering. Not yeah. anytime soon. Not anytime. Soon. <laughs> Okay. Are there are any more book tours or are you sort of, is that sort of that, excuse um, the pun, chapter yeah. done? Oh. So there are some, um, mm. like uh, there's the French Hook Book Festival <laughs> that's coming mm -hmm. up next year. Um, okay. I think there's going to be the Kingsmead one. So we're going to do some book festivals um, as far as I know cool. um, and loads of interviews, having lots of fun. But please grab yourself a copy. Um, mm. I always love feedback um, about what you get from the book. So mm. don't just read the book. Also, let me know what you think. Okay. If we can just touch on that just briefly before we finish, how's the feedback been? I mean, has there anything that stuck out for you from people? Yes, I have heard from people from my past, like at school, you know, that shared things with me that I had no idea, you know, struggles they had with um, their mothers or, mm. you know, just how they resonated with elements of the book that's been real changes for them. Um, and that means that the book is doing exactly what I desired it to do, which is great. Yay! Okay, perfect way to end. I'm going to end the recording and then I'll just chat to you briefly awesome. afterwards. Nikki, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming on. And you know what? I thank you for adding such incredible value to the world that we're in. Thank you for having me. Okay.